the world's first full electric street legal German race car. Enjoy the video. Hello everyone, welcome to another video from Speed Engineering based in Bielefeld, Germany. Today we will talk about our project, which is quite a few days ago. The last update is quite a few days ago. The EV conversion of our BMW Series 1 called Jochen. In future it will be Techno Jochen or Electro Jochen. It's, um, it's been a while, but we have done quite a few steps. And uh, today you will give us a little update together with Alex from ESDE EV Technologies. <laughs> Thank you very much for this, this introduction. You're welcome. Um, so first of all, let's talk about some little theoretical uh, designing stuff. And afterwards we will go to the workshop and take a closer look of what we have done um, so far. So what we can see here is already the motor, right? Drive unit, yes. The drive unit. Oh, the electrical it? machine. Don't, don't call it a motor. I don't know in English, but it's electrical Are you machine. Sure? Yes. Okay, so I've um, done it wrong the last 10 episodes. <laughs> Sorry. Now you can tell it motor is. Okay. You can see the electrical machine. Also, we have new mounting points. So those are the new mounting points you can see here and there. And um, we had to use the OEM connection points where the, uh, the OEM mounting points of the engine really were. Um, we have also created or designed a third one, as you can see here. Now, the critical point was um, that we are not allowed to cut something, to flex something, or to weld on the chassis due to uh, German. We are registered in Germany, so we have to, to make it all TÜV approved. approved. Yes. So there's no cutting, no welding on, uh, on frames or something like that. Uh, you can only use it, do it bolt on, so everything is bolt on. And nothing is really modified. So um, if you want, you could even take the old, take this out again, take the old machine uh, to take the old motor and put it inside again. There was nothing, nothing really major modified. But we can see this in the in the workshop later. This is just a small mock-up that you see how we did all the uh, mechanical work and all the CAD stuff. Correct. Again, I'll stop talking because uh, people are recognizing that your English is far better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the. Um, the, the difficult point here was to, as mentioned before, to use the OEM mountings, but also to implement the first battery box. This is one battery box of, of two with uh, four Porsche Taycan modules. modules yeah. And so, we will get into that later, right? Yeah. We're using Taycan and what the function yeah. is. Yeah, so the battery system is from a Porsche Taycan. We take half of the pack. So normally the Taycan is an 800 volt system. Uh, we are here, um, we are going down to 400 volts to use the Tesla um, drive units. Um, so we use half of the pack. Otherwise, we've got, we will have some weight issues and so on. So we want to have a sporty and light car. So we've got like 45 kilowatt hours in total and we're using 60 modules. So four in the front and uh, 12 in the back. So um, we also get a very good weight distribution. This was the, this were the key, key facts we want to have done perfectly so this is why we chose this setup yes so the rear was one of the keywords now and here we can take a closer look of the rear we have so this is this is the, the, the trunk the trunk correct so this is where the, the back seats normally were so these are out because it was a race car it was stripped down and so we can put the battery modules on here and yeah so yeah. one and Dennis did all the mechanical work on this. Yeah, correct. Also use the connection points here uh, where usually, well, the, the uh, seat, no, not the seat mounts, but the bell seat belt. Was, the seat belt was connected before. Um, those connection points are already approved. It's nothing new. And we use them to implement the box, uh, the battery box for the rear with the 12 modules, as you can see here. This is how it looks, looks on, the, on the computer. And um, yeah, I would say we should go to the workshop now and take a closer look how it looks in real. And also what we had to take care of is that we have certain electrical connections and also a connection here, as you can see, this is for the cooling as the complete system is water cooled. 
Yeah, we've got a thermal management, so in this case we're not driving in the winter time, so we don't have any battery heating. We will only have battery cooling. So um, yeah, we've got uh, our own cooling plates we designed for these modules, but I think we can see this in a workshop better than than on the screen. So I think we also also have a sample of all your battery. Yeah, we've plates. also we've also taken apart one of the modules, so we can have a look at those how they are built inside. And uh, yeah, okay, probably this is quite interesting. Let's switch to the interesting part. Go. Okay, here we go. This is one thing I'm, to be honest, very proud of. Not, not the mess here. But um, what you can see here is the first try and it fits. So um, you saw this on the computer. This is the holder for the front mounting point. It's connected to the OEM connection points and uh, you can barely see the mounting points of the uh, electric machine, electrical machine, what do you say? Electric machine? Mm -hmm. electric, electric machine. And you can say also motor, that's okay. And what we didn't mention is the battery box. Um, it's, it's now empty, it will have four modules, but what we did mention is that this, the uh, requirements of the German TÜV is they have to be stable for 20G in every direction, right? Yeah, so longitudinal, so front to back, it's 20G. I think from left to right, it's 8G. But if, uh, so it's 20G, so this will be around about 120 kilograms, something like that, times 20 is like more than two tons. So you can imagine that we can't use like two M8 bolts. Uh, we have to use like very stiff um, mounting points and very stiff um, mounts. So um, this one is quite small. So the one in the rear with the 12 modules is very big. So um, yeah, we have to have really, really very stiff mounts for that, which yeah. makes it always a bit complicated in Germany. But then you know, it's really, it's really, it really is. It stiff will work. So it work, yeah. And also in case of an accident, nothing should happen in this case. So because 20G is quite a lot. And uh, yeah. what was also quite a big, a big thing is to place the, the motor or the electrical machine um, because we will have a connection with the transmission shaft to the differential. This means that we have to, yeah, quite, we, we can say that we, will, we bought a second transmission shaft and we had to extend it for, I think, 260 millimeters roundabout. Yeah, so uh, to, to sum it up a bit maybe, um, so normally the drive unit in a Tesla is in the rear or in the front, it's like, it's, it's, it's everything inside, so it's the motor, electrical machine with the inverter and the gearbox, and then you connect to the gearbox the drive shafts where the um, wheels are mounted. So in this case, we don't have this because we've got the BMW and we can't fit the motor at the back, otherwise it will be very hard to get it to approved. So in this case, we modified the original drive unit from Tesla so that we can, so we've got a different gear ratio. So then we can connect the, the drive shaft or transmission shaft and go to the, to the rear axle with yeah. that. So this is, this is the special specialty of this conversion. Correct. And this is what makes it quite unique. Um, this is the situation as we have it right now in the car. We already have a transmission shaft um, installed. Here is the differential, here is the OEM mounting point, and we are ending here. But the connection of the Tesla motor is somewhere here. Because we're not using the original gearbox. Correct. Normally the original gearbox would be in between and we don't have this, so um, we have to extend the transmission shaft. Right. The problem is now, we could simply cut it here, extend it by the length needed, and um, then everything would be fine. The problem is now that the distance is quite long which could lead to vibration and, um, and to other problems as we are having quite, uh, quite a big uh, torque on the engine and um, the rotating speed is also quite high. So therefore we decided to add a second uh, mounting point to have a second bearing right somewhere here so that the distance without any um, bearing is not too big. That's correct. This is why we bought the second one and we will make out of two, we will make one transmission shaft. Okay, let's go to the back and then we should talk about the batteries because everyone is asking, why do you use Porsche Taycan battery modules? And uh, Alex will explain us why. But first take a look at the trunk. Oh, not really the trunk, but the back seat, where the back seat were. This is how the battery box looks like. And um, we also have to adapt the cage a little bit because the H, it's called the, the, the H tube, 
um, won't fit here anymore. We will using we will replace the replace the H tube to uh, go underneath our connection points, and we will have a second um, yeah let me say safety safety tube going here to uh, avoid if there is any crash to avoid any movement of the battery box towards the driver and the passenger. Yes. Okay, why are we using Porsche Taycan battery modules? Yeah, so we are building um, a race car, more or less. So we have to have a lot, very, very, en a very high energy density. So we want, have to have very powerful modules. So in this case, we're using the Taycan because, um, yeah, these are probably from the OEM side. If you don't use like very fancy stuff from, I don't know, Remake or something like that. Um, you can use those. I think these are most probably one of the best modules you can get at the moment. Um, so we're going to use this. Also, um, we are planning an update. So this is a small drive unit. So we're talking about like 220 kilowatts. But uh, we also want to do in a second version, we want to use a large drive unit. So then we're talking about 400 kW, uh, which would be very different. And then we need some modules that uh, can, can handle a lot of current. So with the large structure, we're talking about currents of 1,200 amps. So to, to, to make this happen, we have to have very powerful modules. In this case, we're going to use the Porsche Taycan. Um, yeah, this is how one module looks like. We're going to use, like as we said before, 16 of these. So then we've got like a 96S system. Um, so 96 cells in series and two in parallel. So one module has like 12 cells inside. Uh, we opened one to, to, to show you how they, how they are. This. So you can see like um, we've got like pouch cells inside. So there are 12 in here, six in series and two in parallel. Um, you can see the interconnections. You can see the BMS, which is inside. Um, and yeah, we, every cell voltage has to be measured. And they've got two thermistors inside to get the temperatures of every module. And yeah, we will, we will int, int, interconnect our BMS, our master BMS will interconnect with these slaves. So then we can uh, monitor all the cell voltages, etc., and um, have a very safety battery management system. Yeah, I think for, for now this is probably enough. I think we can go more in detail when we're building the battery system itself with all the uh, thermal management and so on and so on. Uh, but yeah, this is the reason why we're using the Taycan models. Also for us, this is our own car, so we're doing testing and everything with it. So um, yeah, this is top of the notch at the moment that you can you can buy. Yes, looking at this at this module, I, I'm thinking of the huge challenge to place 12 of them in there with the cage. Yeah, you've got a very 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 strong guy here, so he can he can do that. Thank no, we we'll, we we'll, we'll figure it out. Now you can do it with a forklift or something like that. Yeah, yeah, forklift. sure. I, I just wanted to say that we have quite limited space because of the roll cage. Yeah, this that is will be a challenge because we can't put in the roll cage afterwards. Um, but the space will be will be a challenge. But we will make it. Sure. I mean, the box is already in there. It will just be a little bit heavier. Yeah. Okay. So thanks a lot for watching. Um, please place a comment below. I bet you have quite lots of questions and um yeah yeah in the next videos we can go a bit more into detail maybe about the drive unit we can show you how we modified it and so on and we can show you how the battery uh, packs are constructed and how they look inside maybe this is quite interesting for you and also like the the, the other different parts like we've got the charging system um, we've got a high voltage junction box or PDU and stuff like that so we can talk about these contactors and so on and so on. I think this would be probably quite interesting and what kind of connectors we are using and why. Okay? <laughs> okay, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye. Bye.